Retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire is laying out his plan for peace in a brand new book titled The Peace. It weaves Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy, alongside General Dallaire's own personal journey. In the 30 years since bearing witness to the Rwandan genocide, General Dallaire has been working relentlessly as a global human rights advocate. He is joining us this morning from his home in Quebec. Good morning and thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much. So you talk about the concept of peace and, and what it means. And you say we confuse this idea of peace with the absence of war. And that is particularly what's keeping us stuck. So what does peace mean to you? Peace, in fact, is something that I would argue is the ultimate of what humanity wants to achieve. That is that serenity in which it can, in fact, focus beyond its sense of security or its sense of insecurity that it now feels. So many of the wars and the conflicts and the fights ended up, yeah, with what we would call peace, but really they were never peace. Mm. It was always a truce. It was temporary. It didn't resolve all the problems. It sort of met a current requirement, but it never went to the, the fundamentals of what created those frictions in the first place that exploded ultimately into war. And so my aim is to push us beyond a world of creating truces to a world of creating lasting peace. Boy, that is a fan fascinating concept, especially when you look at the fact it's been 30 years since the Rwandan genocide. And when you look mm. to current events in places like Gaza and Ukraine and Myanmar, do you see progress from lessons learned in Rwanda or do you see history repeating itself? I am absolutely disgusted with what's going on in Gaza. I am mad beyond words at how we caved in to the bluff of Putin in regarding uh, tactical nuclear weapons and as such NATO has stayed outside of the fight in Ukraine, a country that's going to be continuously attrited and ultimately split one way or another because we uh, did not go in and, and reinforce uh, with boots on the ground, the Ukrainians. And so I feel that with all these years since the Rwandan genocide, where we brought in new concepts like responsibility to protect, we brought in the International Criminal Court, uh, we've done enormous amount of studies, we brought in the Declaration of, uh, of the Rights of the Children and the optional protocol not to use child soldiers, mm -hmm. a lot of great stuff, but we don't apply them. We don't, we don't, we don't, we're afraid of applying it. And the reason for that is that there's no political will to go beyond self-interest. So we're more guilty now of these things happening than we were in 93 and 94, when we were just walking out of the Cold War and trying to figure out where the hell we go from there. The subtitle of your book, although it says the peace, right underneath it says a warrior's journey. And when you look back on that journey in this current season of your life, what do you hope to be remembered for most? I guess I'm asking is, you know, when people think of Romeo Dallaire, what do you want to come to mind? That I was able to ultimately go beyond the concept of the being a warrior, being essentially a warrior ethic. That is to yeah. say that my world is dominated by the use of force ultimately, or the threat of use of force. But in fact, that the warrior has a multidisciplinary capability of assisting in establishing security for so many other facets of humanity to find serenity and ultimately coalesce into long-term peace. The last section of this book, sir, feels incredibly personal. And in it, you talk about survivor's guilt, learning to put on your own oxygen mask first, so to speak, so you're able to help others more effectively. And it also touches on something that we don't often get to talk to you about, and that is love. You write, I have literally gone through hell, spent years in purgatory, and now to this old soldier's astonishment, I see you smiling, I find myself on a completely unfamiliar and serene plane of existence, truly a kind of paradise. So what brings you peace these days? That there was something in, the, in my 
person where I speak a lot of spirit, not religion, but the spirit, the, the inner human, and we could call the soul and so on, that there was a vacuum there, that, that I was simply dragging myself down into ultimately self-destruction until discovered that love had such an extraordinary depth to it that that I could, in fact, live in a context where uh, the reinforcements of other human being, and particularly uh, my wife that I, I married recently, that we could, in fact, bring together a depth to the solutions that I never felt before. I found that there was a lot more to it and that love, in fact, has given me the depth to be able to consider and to ponder going well beyond hmm. the, some of the parameters that have guided us for so long and guided certainly me and many of my colleagues in the accomplishment of our duties and responsibilities. Love is the ultimate of humanity's ability to find respect, and ultimately implement peace, lasting peace, and then go beyond itself. Hmm. We have a role beyond this planet, but we got to get peace to coalesce all the potential we have hmm. and then use that to go beyond and not just take from the universe, take from the sun, but actually be able to engage in the universe and go well beyond. Well, these are words that not just our country, but our world needs to hear right now. And you are the right person to say them. Uh, General Dallaire, thank you for being with us today. Well, you're very kind and uh, thank you for your questions. Well done. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a reminder, General Dallaire's new book is called The Peace, A Warrior's Journey. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.